Hey guys, it's Ken and today we're going to be going into Photoshop and we are going to be using some very basic tools to do a beginner level tutorial. And in this case, we are going to be creating a surreal photo like this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to open the sky image that I've provided for you. If you're in my class, otherwise, if you're just doing this on your own, uh, certainly you can use whatever photos you want. It's about the tools, not the images themselves. So you've downloaded the images and you're simply going to open the sky photo. So all my stuff is down here, but you won't have all this. So I'm going to show you. So you're going to go to file, open, and then you're going to look for sky and double click and this becomes the base of your image. Now, this is a little bit small as far as a canvas is concerned for a workspace, so we're going to open this up by holding down Command on your Mac keyboard or Control on your PC and push the plus button, and that will open it up. In order to make it go back down, hold down Command or Control again and hit the minus button. Now, we're going to be building this kind of like butterfly house. So let's start with the house. So we're going to open up that image by going to File and Open, double click, and there's the house. Now, we want the house, but we don't want the wall and the tabletop that it's on. And so we're going to be using something called the Polygon Lasso Tool. And so if you go over here into your toolbox right here, it'll be your third icon down. Now, you might see the lasso tool or you might see the polygonal lasso tool. You want to choose the polygonal lasso tool. So in order to do that, you hover over the tool, hold down control and click. And then it opens up your little subcategories here. And if it hasn't already got it, click polygonal. Now the tip of your arrow that you can see, so you can see the little tool icon and there's a little arrow. And that little arrow is kind of like the tip of a knife blade and that's what we're going to be using it for we're going to cut out this house now, I've chosen this house because it's a lot of very sharp edges so it doesn't take a whole lot to cut it out but we're going to get into a little more complex cutout process in a few minutes so just pick a spot on the house I'm just gonna start right here and you simply put your arrow tip where you want to start your cutout line and you click and then you drag it out okay so this will now stretch this little line anywhere you want until you find a landing point so I'm just gonna go right Right down to the bottom corner and click again and that anchors that point and then it brings you to the next one and you simply keep doing that so click then drag it over to this corner click now you might not be precise and perfect and that's okay we're just going through a bit of a process here so don't get too too finicky with it but later on again when we're doing a little more precision cutting you will want to take a little more time And then your final click will be right back at your starting point and you make that connection and now these little dotted lines they're called marching ants will show you that you have selected all of that and is ready to be cut out and now as you can see we are no longer anchored we're going to copy this image and we're going to paste it onto the sky but when we hit copy just like if you're using a word document or something all it's going to grab is everything inside those marching ants so hold down command or control and C. Now nothing will happen, but if we go back to Sky and then hold down Command or Control and V, there's our house. Now this house is way too big. I don't want it to be that big. We're going to resize this house. So holding down Command or Control on your PC, hit T. And this opens up something called the Transform Tool. And now what this does is these little boxes here are little anchor points that allow you to grab them and move things around however you want. Now, as you can see, I can stretch it tall, stretch it wide, whatever. You can do whatever you want to it. I want to go back to my original shape. So Commander Control Z. And then if I don't want to lose my sort of proportions, I can hold down Shift and then grab one of these corners and then it maintains its proportions. So I've made it a little smaller. I'm just going to put it because I do want it to sort of look like it's flying in the air and I don't want it straight it's not sitting flat I'm going to curve it so if you go off to the side you'll see that your little arrow is a double arrow uh, with a curve and that simply tells me that I can now turn this so I'm gonna angle it right like that and that looks good enough to me so I am going to click 
return or enter and now we placed our house the next thing i want to do is put on the butterfly wings i'm going to have one sticking out from behind the house over here and i'm going to have one attached to the house over here so we're going to go up to file open and wherever our butterfly wings are here they are and you can choose whichever butterfly wings you want again this is a little small i'm going to hold down command or control and plus and then i'm going to use a different tool this time i'm going to use the quick selection tool so again if this doesn't have the quick selection tool it'll be the fourth tool down on your toolbar hold down control and pop open this little mini menu and you'll have a few options magic wand quick selection and object selection we want quick selection now for this one all you simply are doing is this little circle that you can see you're going to drag it around inside your shape and it will try to find the edges and outline what it thinks you want so it's sort of the quick and easy way to do what we already did with the polygonal lasso tool but you do have to be careful because if you look down here this little white circle right there actually has little marching ants going around it meaning it hasn't selected that area so you do have to be a little more precise and this tool doesn't always work it works nicely here because we've got a nice sharp edge and a nice flat background but if you're cutting something out from a busier background this may not be the tool for you so once you think you have your shape cut out we're going to go up here to select and mask and if you click that what it does is it turns this little film and if yours is not red that's okay you can go up here to view and it might show an onion skin which would be this red but it's kind of a white instead of red marching ants which is what it originally looked like you've got the overlay i like this one just so i can see through it a little bit so we want to make sure that we don't have any of these little extra bits of white clinging onto the side so we're going to fix those edges up a little bit so we're going to go over here to where it says edge detection and choose smart radius and then bring that radius up just a little bit until you see those lines those white areas disappear and then i like to smooth it out just a little and then contrast will bring a little bit of sharpness back to the edge and once you're happy with it you click ok now you simply copy and paste again commander control c go back to your sky and commander control v now i don't want it there so i'm going to go to my move tool click the top four pointed arrow and i'm going to drag it over to you know wherever I want it and it's going to be right about here it's a bit too small I want it to be a little bit bigger so command T or control T hold down your shift so you don't lose your proportions and when you're happy with it click enter or return now I don't want the wing on the front of the house I want it to seem like it's attached somewhere on this wall that we can't see so all we have to do then is rearrange our layers so right now this is sort of like a sandwich this is the bottom layer and then this is is the meat and then this is the top layer okay this is the top of the bun but we want to put the bun under the meat so we simply drag our layer above it now you're noticing over here this is your layers panel we've got our background we've got our wing we've got our house but we're going to end up with maybe six or eight things in this layer panel and we're going to be playing with those things in various ways so what we want to do just in order to keep ourselves organized is we're going to label these layers before we get too far ahead of ourselves so let's go to layer two which would be our wing and just double click on where it says layer two and we're just going to call it right wing because there will be two wings and then layer one we'll just call house now we want there to be two wings so instead of going back and cutting out another one we can actually just duplicate this one by holding down command or control and clicking j and if you see it made a right wing poppy and if we go to our move tool we can just bring this over and now we have two wings but it's flipped the wrong way and it's behind our house we don't want that because this wing will be attached to this side of the house and we want to see where it's attached so we have to flip this over to do that you go up to edit and then you go halfway down to transform and then flip horizontal warning if you go to image and image rotation there's also flip canvas horizontal that flips everything and that's not what we want so uh, make sure that you're going to the edit and then you go over to transform and flip horizontal now we'll place it ah but what's the problem it's still behind the house so that's easy enough to fix we just drag it on top of them and then now this right wing feels like it's kind of in the wrong spot so let's move that up a little bit and let's label this one left wing 
If I want to angle my right wing or left wing a little bit, you just command or control T. And remember, so that curved little arrow shows us that we're going to be sort of moving it on an axis at the center. When you're happy with it, hit enter and you move it into place. We're going to put feet on our house. So let's open the foot photo. So file, open, and our duck feet. And we're going to use this quick selection tool again. By the way, if this quick selection tool is way too big or way too small, simply use your square brackets. The right square bracket will make it larger and the left square bracket will make it smaller. Don't forget to grab these little claws. We're only gonna do one at a time. We'll just select and mask, get a little bit of white over here. So we will do our smart radius. Try to get rid of that edge of white a little bit. We'll smooth it out and I'm going to bring a little contrast back Back to it click OK command or control C go back to the sky because that's what we're building everything onto and command or control V there's our foot it's way too big so command or control T bring it down to the size you want when you're happy with it hit return or enter and then using your move tool we'll place it wherever we want go back to our duck feet and we want to grab the other duck foot as well but we don't want to grab this one. And right now, these marching ants tell us that these ones are also going to be selected. So we can use our tool and we can do it again. But if we do that, we will grab both of these feet. And I only want this one. So in order to get rid of your marching ants and start over, hold down Commander Control and click D. And now grab the other duck foot, select and mask, smart radius, smooth contrast. Commander Control C to copy, go back to the sky, Commander Control V v to paste too big commander control t to resize hold down your shift button and simply drag it down to the size that you want i'm going to angle this a little bit and i'm going to place it where i want it i'm going to label these left foot right foot then i'm going to rearrange this left foot just a little bit now, you know something? I don't like this left foot very much. I think I feel like I want them both to sort of be facing forward. So I'm gonna delete this layer by simply making sure that that layer is active and you can tell because it's highlighted. You can do two things actually. You can turn off the eyeball and it'll just disappear or you can just delete it by simply clicking delete. I want to duplicate this right foot. I want another one. So I'm gonna hold down command or control and click J and that makes a copy like we did before. Using your move tool, I'm going to move my copy, I'm going to T, and I'm going to make it look like this. And I feel like mm, it's still not quite what I want. I want to flip that foot, so I'm going to go to edit, I'm going to go down to transform, and I'm going to flip horizontal. Re-angle. Now I'm a little happier. Now, my background, I think there's a little bit too much of the field, and I don't want it to look like this house is standing on the field. I want it to look like it's hovering in the air. So I need to make this canvas bigger. I want to crop out some of this green and make sure that the sky is the dominant feature. Now I could grab all of these elements here and lift it up, but I'm going to be putting a few other things in the background here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to manipulate the background a little bit. So your background is probably locked. You'll see this little lock box on here. If you simply click on that box, it'll disappear. As long as that lock is there, you cannot change a layer. Now that it's unlocked, I can do whatever I want. I'm going to use the transform tool, command T. I'm going to increase the size of this by holding down my shift and dragging it out. So there's just a little sliver of that grass on the ground. I do want it to be sort of level, so I'm going to angle it a little bit, and I'm going to hit return. What you notice now is that it actually left these little slivers of sky, where our canvas from behind is now visible, these little gray things. I can fix that by using something called the healing brush tool, and I can sort of fill that in. So at the very bottom of this toolbox, you'll see three little dots. And if you click on those little dots, hold down control and left click, and you will open up this little extra menu. And we're going to go down to the spot healing brush and left click. Now, all you're simply going to do is paint over these areas with that tool 
and it sort of reads the surroundings and fills it in with that information. This is a easy little tool if you're doing simple little fixes like this. It can be a little more complex if your image is a little more complex, but because we have such a simple background, it just grabs that blue or that white for the clouds and just fills it in. Now, our house with our duck feet and our wings is fine, it's finished, it's all done, but I wanna fill in a little bit of this other stuff. So I'm gonna have other little bees of some kind flying around and for that I'm going to use the little Volkswagen image so we're going to go to file open and we'll go to the beetle now this image is going to be a little trickier because we've got curves and not so many just straight out straight lines and so we're going to use the polygonal tool again and then you just find a starting point and you're doing the exact same thing but because there are a lot of curves you have to make a lot of much smaller little micro spots to drop those anchors so just pick a starting point. You can pick whatever you want. I'm just going to start here at the back. This is a bit small. Let's make it a little larger so that we can see. So hold down Command or Control and then the plus button. And now we can see a little more of what we're doing. And as you can see, you have to make much smaller lines in order to get the curves and things. Now I'm going through this fairly quickly. If I was doing this for a project, I would take the time to make sure that I was really precise. So now we're at the tires. And as we know, tires are round. And there's not very many straight lines on a round object. So you have to take the time to do it very, very carefully. Once again, it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. We're just getting a feel for the tools. Now, there are other tools that you can use. You can capture those curves a little better, but that's a little more complex, and we're not really going to get into that. Now, I'm at a point where I'm going to do a run a straight line straight across here, but as you can see, the front of the car is cut off. But if you just kind of drag over, it'll sort of just quickly slide it over there for you. And now, once we reach our starting point, we're going to select and mask. Let's make it a bit smaller. In order to make it smaller here, just put two fingers on your trackpad and sort of squeeze them together, and it'll make it a little bit smaller. It looks pretty decent. Hold down copy, go back to our sky, hold down command V to paste. Way too big, so command or control T. We're gonna make it smaller, drag it all the way down, drag it over, keep resizing until you get the size you want, and then we just move it into position, and there we have our little beetle bug. Now, I want wings on my beetle bug as well, and so we're going to go to open, and then we've got B wings. We're gonna open those. So I'm gonna use my uh, quick selection tool. I'm gonna open this up a little bit, so command or control plus, and then I'm going to just get in here and grab my wings quick and easy. Again, because we're on a nice solid background, it's a lot easier. This is trickier when you're on a uh, more complex background. Now, let's say you accidentally grab this white section and this is obviously empty space. You don't want that, but your marching ants are curving in here somewhere, which is telling you that when you cut this out, it's still going to have this section here. All you simply have to do is hold down Option. And if you'll see, there's a little plus sign in the middle of that dot. It turns into a minus sign. And all it does is allow you to take away that thing that it just grabbed so that it's no longer part of your cutout. So let's go to Select and Mask. I like this. I'm not going to get too ex excited about these little fuzzy things because it just makes things a little more complicated for our purposes. So I'm just going to do my Smart Radius, smooth it out, do my Contrast, click OK. Commander Control C, go back to Sky, Commander Control V, and again, it is not where we want it so let's drag that to the top so we can see it command T we're going to put it onto our car now it's obviously upside down so let's just simply spin it and it's still upside down because the big wing should be on top so we're going to hit enter or return and then we're going to go to edit we're going to go to transform and this time we're going to flip vertical Command T again to get the proper angle and place it where we want it. There should be wings on the other side, so let's do that. Let's hold down Command or Control and J to duplicate it. So now you can see it up here. We've got our B wing. This is our back B wing. And we 
we can move it around but it's still in front so let's put it behind the car and then we'll bring the back B wing below the beetle and now it kind of looks like it's in behind and then simply with your move tool you can sort of place it where you want it I like this little B I want more of them so I'm going to hold down the B wing and I'm going to hold down command. I'm gonna click beetle with command or control held down and front B wing. And what I've done is I've just selected these three layers because I'm gonna copy and paste this. So I'm going to hold down command or control C, command or control V, and now it pops up and I can now put it over here. But I want it facing the other way. They are all still highlighted. So I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go down to transform and flip horizontal. And then I can just place it wherever I want. And now that I've got that copied, it's already in sort of the memory. So command J again makes another copy. And I'm gonna put it here, but I want this one to be smaller. So I'm gonna go command or control T. And I'm gonna put that like that. Hit enter or return. I want another little one like that. So command or control J. And I'm gonna put another little one over here. We wanna flip it. And then you just keep doing that as long as you want to. So the other thing I wanna do, I think, is I wanna put something inside these windows. So I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool. Make sure your house layer is active. And I'm gonna cut out my windows. Now, I can see this butterfly wing. I don't wanna see this little part of the butterfly wing. So I'm just gonna erase it. So we know that this is the right wing, so we will click right wing, and then we'll go to our eraser tool, and then we're simply going to erase it. So I have these silly faces that I wanna use. So I'm gonna go up to file, open, and I'm going to go to silly face one, and I'm simply going to grab this kit here, drag it all the way over to sky without letting go, hold down shift, and then bring it down and drop it. And there's our goofy kid. Now, we're going to make him smaller because he's way, 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 way too big. Command T, and you may have to go and find the corner. And we're gonna put him in the window. And then we're gonna do that again with the other silly face. Now she is where I want her, but I don't want this. So again, we go back to our eraser and I just get rid of that. Now that we're finished, so now we have to save it. Now, depending on which version of Photoshop you're using, there's two ways to do this. You can go up to File, Save As, and then in your format, one of your options will be JPEG. But if it's the newest version of Photoshop 2021, they changed it for some reason, I have no idea why. So go to File, and then you go to Save a Copy. Save a Copy as a JPEG. I'm gonna save this to my desktop, and here it is right there. So that's it, we're all done. You used some very basic tools, you did some really interesting things, you made a goofy, crazy kind of surreal image, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now get out there and do some Photoshop.